In this session, we are going to discuss the very important aspect of sharing the shortlist and supporting documents with the buyer. If you recall in the previous session, a shortlist was designed, a shortlist was devised, and we came to a final shortlist of suppliers. And if we recall further, we did say that the shortlist which was going to be taken or is taken forward, taken forward to the buyer, uh, it needed and is expected that there are two to three real uh, suppliers, good suppliers to real opportunities or per opportunity. So to recap, two to three suppliers per opportunity that we would like to take forward to the buyer. In this session, we are going to unpack and discuss that process on how to engage, to go to the buyer and to say here are our three suppliers or two suppliers per opportunity and the process from there on how to engage and to take uh, this process to a possible matchmaking. So it's a very crucial part of the process and the outline of this session is we're going to look at meeting the buyers to share the responses. Uh, we are going to look at the, the suppliers that came back, the suppliers that responded, those two to three suppliers that are suggested by the SPX. And we are going to meet with the buyers, and this is where the, the crunch comes, and we're going to share uh, the responses with the buyer. The next point that we are going to discuss and explore is sharing additional inf information. Could, it could happen that the, the buyer, after we had given, and, uh, uh, given them the, the possibilities of the suppliers, after we have submitted the suppliers, they may have a look at the suppliers again and see, well, maybe we need a bit more information. Uh, and that, that is something that could happen because the buyers must make sure they must be very clear uh, in what they need from a supplier. And there, this SPX plays a very important role. The third point that we are going to uh, talk about is confirming the way forward. And the way forward is obviously, well, logically, is a follow-up, and that would be a request for quotes. You can imagine, and if we look at the, the sequence, it makes sense that firstly we have the shortlist, we have the suppliers that we're suggesting from the SPX side after the scrutiny, and if the, the buyer is happy in a broad sense uh, and accepting the fact that these suppliers are the ones that they would like to work with, then they would the next step would be uh, asking for quotes. And that is really where uh, the important interaction really tangibly starts between the suppliers and the buyers. The fourth aspect under scrutiny today will be buyer qualification, the buyer qualification process. Um, the buyer qualification process is where the buyer qualifies. He says, that's fine, we are now going to work with the supplier. That is the absolute important part of this process, and that is the indicator of the success of the interaction of bringing suppliers to the buyers. Looking at our first point, meeting the buyers to share responses and that there should be regular updates. You as learners must understand and you will, you will, you will realize the importance that, uh, that it could, cannot be. This interaction or this meeting uh, and interaction with the buyer 
regarding the suppliers cannot be once off. It can't be just a meeting uh, one day and uh, they sign a contract and, and, and off and off they go. Uh, it, it would it is a it is a dynamic process. It is quite a, in many instances a quite an intricate process, and uh, it needs a lot of intelligence from both sides and information sharing, communication, uh, and understanding of each other's uh, needs, requirements, and that is why regular update meetings will be important. Now, sharing the shortlist and supporting documents with buyers. We meet the buyers to share responses. We meet the buyers to share responses. Uh, the responses that the SPX got from the list and from the shortlist, or which was based, or the shortlist, the final shortlist, remember, was based on the responses after the lists of opportunities were sent out to our supplier base. So, in this instance, we share those responses. SPX talks to the buyers, they look at the responses, and if there are updates, if the supplier would like and feels that they want to add some information, it is totally open and it is accepted. We will also later in the session talk about those aspects where there could be additional information added to the process. To share and motivate choices, SPX has a very important role to play in verifying their suggestions. Remember, SPX suggested the suppliers. So now, when we talk to the buyers, we must be very sure of our case, of our business case. We must be very sure that these suppliers would not be totally out of line. We must know and we must be quite sure that these suppliers have a very good chance of satisfying the needs of the buyers. The first, the first shall we say, aspect or an element uh, or something that we a referral that could influence the choice and the, of the buyer for, the, for using a supplier would be the profile. Profiles and benchmarks. In our previous session, we spoke about profiles and benchmarks. We're not going to go into too much detail on the profiles and the benchmarks, but to recap, we are very, very uh, sure that the profiling and the benchmarking are the most important tools or mechanisms that could influence a buyer's decision. Let us take the next point as, as follows. We acquire buyer inputs on the suggested suppliers. That's where the interaction takes place. As we're negotiating, because remember SPX, uh, we are negotiating with the buyers, the buyers and the suppliers. Uh, so it's a three-way uh, interaction where SPX could play a, a major role and should play a major role in giving additional information, verifying the, uh, and also justifying the suggestions and the selected companies as suppliers. Now, to acquire the buyer inputs on the suggested suppliers, that's the one which we've just spoken about. It's very important that the buyer input, the buyer needs to give, be given a fair chance to talk about their concerns, and that's where the interaction is very important. The next point is confirm the process forward and buyer approval. Now, this is absolutely crucial 
that the confirmation of the process forward is cleared out in the meetings. And in those gatherings, there should be a very clear direction. Weekly, bi-weekly meetings, full progress reports, it is an imperative that there should be weekly progress reports. And it, it will update on supplier information. It updates information on the suppliers that we identified. That is the first point, because it may, as we said, it may be that the supplier needs some more information that they want to submit. Uh, detailed description of potentially good suppliers. A detailed description. SPX talks to the buyers. There's a de that more detail is then uh, given through and submitted to the buyer. So they need more detail on those suppliers. The process of suppliers that need to be taken forward, discuss and decide on the process of suppliers that need to be taken forward. So here is a critical point. The buyer has seen the two to three suppliers. They have scrutinized them. We have spoken to each other. We have had meetings. Uh, it was verified, uh, it was evaluated, the, the, whole process, the whole process then comes to the point of the buyer taking a supplier and deciding on suppliers. An interesting point is new opportunities. If we look at new opportunities, it may happen within this process that the buyer uh, suddenly realizes that there are some more opportunities that they would like to put out and they would possibly like to look at existing suggested suppliers because to go through the whole process again is cumbersome and it would make sense to the, for them to if there are new opportunities. An example a huge company building locos, uh, or in fact they were they got a, a contract for maintaining uh, for the maintenance of uh, three thousand locomotives, and um, they were given and they were provided with suppliers, as we've just discussed now, that we had, the meetings were held with them. Uh, they decided on suppliers, and as we got to a certain point where they were actually getting to the RFQ, which we will be talking about, asking for quotes, getting uh, more involved and, and, and uh, drawing in the suppliers, there were a number of other opportunities that, that uh, arose. Uh, opportunities, new opportunities, new components, which they, which they actually identified, and this is important to remember, they identified those other or new opportunities on the basis of the information that they saw on the suppliers that were suggested to them. And that is important to remember. The supplier profile, we did talk about the supplier profile in the past. In this, in this slide, we would probably uh, see a bit more of the detail, which, which I referred to in our previous sessions. Uh, the profile form gives a company name that is general information. It would give company address, the normal information, contact names, other information, quality, employees, etc. 
financial information. We did say, and you will remember, if you go out as an XPX uh, employee or if you, you go out on the SPX functioning or the program, you will find that it is quite difficult to get some of that information, especially financial information. The sector of activity, in other words, what products are they in? And that, that actually flows into the next one, products and services. The sector is more which, uh, in, in, in which uh, broad category of, of uh, manufacturing are they actually working? Are they subcontracting? In other words, they're subcontracting products, manufacturing operations, and machine lists. As I said in the previous session, we spoke about facilities. The facilities, test and control equipment, which gives an indication of how sophisticated the manufacturing is of the supplier. Now, now benchmarking reports is a further step. We also did discuss that. The benchmarking report is the second set of information shared. Fantastic information, which is absolutely crucial for a buyer to know. In other words, how are they, how is the company, how, how is the supplier performing? So the performance criteria and they are also the practices criteria. In other words, how are they doing their business? How are they doing uh, which is not seen? In other words, it's not visible. What are their processes? And how are they actually doing their business? Because remember, how business is done is not always visible. This is more detailed information and gives a feel for sustainability. Please let us recap very briefly. Sustainability, environmental, social, economic, and also community. And they are a very important, there's a very important aspect on sustainability, and that is on corporate governance. How are you actually running your business? And the benchmarking will give you this information. The buyer can make benchmarking a prerequisite. The buyer can decide, I want the suppliers to undergo benchmarking. I would like them to be benchmarked so that they can see how this company actually fares and how do they stand in relation to other companies or similar companies to them. The report concludes with a summary of findings as well as a suggested act action plan. Very important, after benchmarking is done, there is a report, a very extensive report given to the company. The company has a look at it, gaps are identified, and the, the problems of the company are then diagnosed, and there are a number of programs in place that SPX has access to to assist the company's intervention, interventions to assist them in closing those gaps which have been identified through the benchmarking. Sharing additional information is our next topic. Now, the additional information is derived from, as we said, uh, a buyer needs a bit more information from a supplier. They're not 200% sure, so they will talk uh, to the SPX and ask them to give them some more information on, this, on, this, on the supplier. Now, now the, the buyer might request additional information or identify something which might pose a problem. And that is exactly what we've just said. The, the buyer might request additional information if they find there's something that's worrying them or hindering them on the supplier information.
Then further to do that uh, and, and following up on asking for further information, they might even ask for another visit. They might suggest a visit to the supplier in order to verify all the pres presented information. Absolutely uh, in their right. Start the onboarding process. Onboarding will be discussed and explained to you more in the study material. Uh, the process of the buy, if all is found to be in place. So if they're happy, the onboarding means to start doing business. Confirm the way forward, possible outcomes. The supplier is not appropriate. If the supplier is not appropriate due to various reasons, but mainly from the buyer's perspective, that could happen. Buyer needs more information on a supplier, as we've said. That these are aspects or these are requests that a buyer could ask the SPX to, to uh, intervene and to actually uh, find that inf more information and to verify. Buyer needs more supplies per opportunity. That's very interesting. It can happen that a buyer would need more uh, information uh, or more, more suppliers, uh, excuse me, more suppliers per opportunity. Uh, there, should be, there could be an opportunity and they feel that the suppliers are maybe not, they don't have the capability and the capacity, so they would uh, ask for maybe more suppliers. So SPX would have to then suggest more suppliers. It's always a good thing if the SPX have more than one or two or three suppliers. So there should be some suppliers that are extra uh, in the database which could fit that, uh, that opportunity. Buyer wants to visit the supplier again. That could happen. They would say, I want to revisit. They're not too happy. Or they want to see some of the, the processes. They want to see more of, of, of the, the facilities. They want to probably find out a bit more on the technology, on the research and development. They could ask for any additional information. Buyer wants to start the onboarding process and further qualification. That is then uh, a decision taken after all these aspects have been taken into consideration. Now the next point which we would like to talk about is confirming the way forward. And this specifically refers to the request for quote process. The request for quotes uh, and that is after the buyer, they have now looked at all their suppliers, they've seen the supplier profiles, they've seen the benchmarking if, if necessary, and they are now in the process that they want to ask those suppliers for the quote. And this is, this is really a crucial point. Because everything up to now could be fantastic and, and verified and... and uh, it, it could be justified and the buyer is happy with the supplier, the supplier is, is, is ready and, and excited about doing business, but then it could happen that the pricing is not right. So let us go through this process. We call it a short RFQ process. It's a detailed buyer parts list. The detailed buyer parts list is then communicated to the supplier to price and to quote on. The parts list is analyzed with buyer to identify best business case. Supplier must engage with the buyer in this instance so that they can meet each other somewhere in between. That is negotiation. It's business talk. That is where we are at that stage. Finalize the shortlist, the parts list of possible trade opportunities. So it may be that the supplier would and the buyer would agree that not all the parts uh, on that opportunity or all the components or all the systems or all the items would be uh, negotiated or would be supplied. Or 
a price would be supplied, on, not on all of those maybe, and they could decide on that. The SPX identify the possible suppliers. A list of suppliers are filtered based on certain criteria. Now, I'd like to just talk about this in more, a little bit more detail. Now, the, if, we, if we actually take ourselves back to the previous slide, the short RFQ process, number one, detailed buyer parts list, that is the parts list for uh, quotes. The parts list is analyzed with the buyer, buyer and the supplier, and, and, and uh, the, uh, the SPX would be involved. And the finalized short list, the parts list of possible trade opportunities. As we said, they may not want to engage or get quotes on all of the parts. Yeah, the SPX plays a big role and they identify possible suppliers, specific suppliers for specific components. The list of suppliers are filtered. Now we must remember that on the opportunity there may be two or three suppliers and that first point where the SPX identify, identify the possible suppliers is where they would suggest which of those one, two or three would be the ones that they would uh, think should be used by the buyer. It could be one, it could be all three, it could be four. Uh, so that is where the SPX actually intervenes and assists in the process and in the program. And then a list of suppliers are filtered now, after you've got the list of components, the parts list, uh, suppliers are then suggested and filtered by SPX and also together with the buyers. And that filtering is where it actually means where it's the, 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 real, the real ones or the, 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 the suppliers that should be engaged with specifically are then identified. Um, other aspects regarding uh, the RFQ, the short, it's a short qualification process which will be discussed in detail in the next lesson. Um, and it consists of the following steps uh, in sequence. That is the Parts list is analyzed, finalizing the shortlist, SPX search and identify possible suppliers. These are the ones that we've already mentioned. List of suppliers are filtered and then final shortlist is discussed with the buyer. After this, the list of suppliers, you get a final shortlist and we must be very clear here. The final shortlist that we're talking about here is not, it's, it's a, the final shortlist uh, of, yes, of the suppliers. Uh, is then uh, suggested to the buyer. NDAs are sent to suppliers. After this process, when the suppliers are being suggested, the real ones are, are put forward, the buyers are happy, they want to go and, and ask for, for quotes for certain suppliers. The NDAs on those suppliers, as soon as the RFQ is given out to a supplier, the NDA comes into play, and that is the non-disclosure agreement, which we've spoken about. There is an example of a non-disclosure agreement, which you will see in your study material also. Drawings and indicative volumes with the RFQ are sent to suppliers. Drawings and indicative volumes with the RFQ are sent to suppliers. We know it's not an easy process to find quotes and to get quotes from a company it is just fair for the buyer to supply to the supplier uh, to supply to the supplier as much information as possible on the product and we know that one of the most important thing is drawings technical specs and volumes and also a time frame the quote is returned and evaluated 
by the buyer. Possible negotiations with suppliers who are in close contact to target price. The negotiations take place with those that are in close range or on target with the price. SPX to analyze the quotes which are way out to initiate corrective action. As we said in an early session, it can happen. We found that sometimes for the same product, people have, well, the case in, the case in point which we spoke about was 500% out, out of the ballpark. So that sometimes is, can happen and we don't understand always what those, what that really, uh, what is caused, what does it cause. Um, the other one is, is that the buyer starts their qualification process with selected suppliers. Qualification, and now that is where the buyer starts with its real qualification. Up to now, they've got all the information, they've selected the preferential suppliers, they have come to a point where they think they can work with supplier A, B, C and D, and now after they have analyzed the quotes which the suppliers have uh, furnished them with, they now start the qualification process. And that is our next heading which we're going to discuss. It's buyer qualification. The buyer is now going to qualify who they want to use. Now, there's a pre-shipping process. Now, let's discuss quickly. We remember and we all know that shipping doesn't only mean shipping, marine shipping, shipping on the, by sea. We know that shipping means transport. And transport is a very important aspect of the whole logistics chain and of doing business uh, between uh, companies. It's to obtain a non-disclosure agreement, which we've already said, between the buyer and the supplier. A final request for quote sent to the supplier. And then a new component introduction process can be introduced. Now, we must just be quite clear here that you have an NDA, this is the pre-shipping process, this is now after the request, uh, the, the initial request for, qu for quote, then there's a final request for quote, and a new component introduction process can be introduced by the buyer, and that NCI, new component introduction process, will also be available, uh, and there's an example of that in your study material. Now, there is a shipping process. Remember, we spoke now about the pre-shipping process. That's before transport. But then a whole, a whole lot of steps and very difficult logis logistical chain uh, processes start taking place. Uh, we will briefly discuss them. There's a deviation process, a discrepant material process, a supplier accountability process, and a corrective action process. Now, the deviation process is a non-conformance prior to shipment, permission request to ship the product despite its condition through uh, the, well, despite its condition, and that is a deviation process. I think what I must do is come back and talk about them one by one. The deviation process, non-conformance, 
prior to shipment and permission is asked uh, to ship the product. Then there's a discrepant material process. After a product has been shipped, a discrepant material report will be written against it as part of it. So discrepant material process is after a product has been shipped, a discrepant material report will be written. Now, that is if there is a problem with maybe uh, the product in a certain way. Supplier accountability process in case where defects have significantly adverse consequences. The discrepant material process is where there's probably a slightly, a slightly a different uh, or a slight problem which is not so serious. And then supplier accountability process uh, is where there are defects. The shipping, the corrective action process in the shipping process, if the non conformances are severe or chronic, the issue may be addressed with a corrective action process. Let's go through it uh, very briefly again. The deviation process, non conformance, but request to ship it anyway. The discrepant material process, after a product has been shipped, a discrepant material report will be written against it. There's a discrepancy. There might be a small change in what was originally uh, on, the, uh, on the agreement. The supplier accountability process is cases where defects have significantly, significantly adverse consequences. It has to be said. Corrective action process is if the non-conformance are severe or chronic, it may be addressed with a corrective action process. It may mean that it has to be sent back or obviously there has to be other actions taken. Ongoing engagement between buyers and suppliers. Characteristic monitoring process. That is a methodology, it's a tool, it's a, it's a mechanism. Throughout the relationship, it helps. Suppliers continually strive for improvement that achieve higher levels of customer success. And this is very important. It, it latches on to quality maybe. But in this case, throughout the relationship, the char characteristic monitoring process Help suppliers continually strive for improvement that achieve higher levels of customer success. This is an intent of good, or what shall we say, of excellence. And that's what we want. We want excellence from the supplier, and so the buyer wants excellence, and the SPX wants excellence because it's quite clear if the suppliers are not uh, excellent enough, if, there's, if there are problems with, a, with, it could be with the lead times, it could be with the, with the quality, it could be uh, with the volumes, the capacity and the cap capability, uh, the SPX should know about that so that there could be corrective action. And then the last one, quality audit process. Uh, the quality audit process ensures a continued focus on quality improvement to support customer success. Now, learners, this is very important that we now at this stage know that there's an engagement. And this is an exciting stage in the whole SPX Pro program that a buyer and a supplier are now actively engaged there's requests for quotes and there's possibility of matchmaking. Thank you.